He's an expert on uh, healthcare policies, and he's a consultant of governments in the analysis of uh, um, health needs after the war. He worked in Bosnia, in Vietnam, and things of that sort. And he also worked in Turkey and in the former Yugoslavia. He was the di director of uh, uh, of the Office for the Development of uh, Quality Policies uh, for the European Office of WHO. We met some 30 years ago, and uh, we did a number of things together, and I think that uh, uh, we can learn a lot from him, really. That uh, uh, we can learn a lot from him, really. Working? Um, Franco, Andrea, dear friends and colleagues, two days ago I could have celebrated the 45th anniversary of the defense of my doctoral dissertation. The subject was quality. It was probably the first doctoral level piece of research in Europe on quality. However, that topic was not necessarily welcome. Some of my respected colleagues, the distinguished professors, were afraid of quality. A little bit what uh, was said about uh, Franco Perraro, that he was a little bit bizarre in taking up such a subject. The same happened to me. And what were the concerns of my dear uh, teachers, professors? The first one was that they were afraid that quality assurance or quality improvement, or as it was still called often, quality control, is a terrible thing. It's a big brother looking above your shoulder, checking what you are doing. And that, of course, is absolutely unacceptable. The second concern was that um, if there were a system of co assessing the quality of services, then the patients would get hold of the results and they would go to the court if they felt that the quality had not been good. And of course, the good doctors would not like that. And the final argument was that quality assurance is something perhaps needed in the United States with their bad healthcare system. But of course, in a country like Finland, where we have an excellent healthcare system, it was not needed. So, I decided to look at what has happened since uh, 40 years, 45 years ago in Finland. How has quality assurance developed? I carried out a systematic study, and as sources of information, I used scientific articles or editorials, or opinion articles, whatever, where the subject was quality in three important Finnish journals, the Finnish Medical Journal, which is a professional one, sometimes carries also scientific articles, but basically it's a professional uh, <coughs> journal. Uh, Duodekim is the leading scientific journal in Finland, and Sairala Lehti, which means the hospital magazine, is a business-oriented uh, journal published by the owners of the hospitals. So those three main journals, the articles there, were part of the <coughs> um, material. Then I checked all the documents issued by the authorities and relevant professional associations. The relevant professional associations were the Finnish Medical Association, the Finnish Nursing Association, and the Finnish Hospital Association, representing the owners. Then I identified something like 20 people who had been active in the development of quality in Finland since my dissertation, and interviewed them. And then finally, I sent a questionnaire to all medical and nursing faculties in Finland. And when then analyzing the information I had, I tried to answer two questions. 
how has quality assurance developed in Finland since 1970? And what factors have influenced, influenced this development, if there has been any development? For the uh, experts whom I in interviewed, I had some uh, more specific questions. I wanted them to name any specific events, let's say conferences or uh, uh, law cases or court cases or any important documents that might have triggered uh, the development. I asked them to describe the current state of affairs and I asked them whether they felt that the training the medical students and to get in undergraduate and postgraduate training corresponds with the needs of practice in relation to quality. And finally, I asked them to perform a so-called SWOT strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats analysis of quality assurance in Finland at the time uh, the study was carried out two years ago, actually. And the medical and nursing faculties, I asked to state whether they had any training activities in quality assurance, and if they had, what were the objectives and what were the methods. So, uh, the, re the focus of the research was just the personal health services. I excluded laboratories for the simple reason that in Finland every single laboratory is accredited and has an ongoing quality assurance system. Uh, radiology I excluded because radiology is actually covered nowadays by EU requirements and legislation, so there's no need to go into that. And finally, I excluded patient safety, although it was quite fashionable at the time uh, of uh, carrying this research, but because it was a latecomer, it came much later than the other aspects of quality in Finland. So, what did I find? First of all, there were 377 articles that were related to quality of personal health services. In 1970s, there were just a handful. They dealt with patient satisfaction. There were some attempts to define what is quality assurance, and there were some papers describing some basic methods like uh, medical audit and so on. Then, 1980s, there was an almost total absence of anything. Only the owner uh, published Sairala, the hospital journal, had a couple of articles and they dealt with patient satisfaction, not with any other aspect of quality. Rather strange, Com complete silence. And then 1990s, suddenly there was an outburst of uh, uh, articles, um, uh, maybe 350 out of the 377 who were published in 1990s. And uh, they dealt with many aspects of quality. There were editorials that were taking stand on whether this is needed or in which direction it should go. There were articles on the methods being used. There were some research reports already. And there were some recommendations as to uh, how quality assurance should be implemented, what should be its objectives, and so on. Now, what explains this uh, new interest in 1990s? One thing was that there were several new tools that became available at that time. The ISO standards were a brand new thing in Finland at that time and the hospital owners got interested in them. The hospital owners in Finland, by the way, are the municipalities. There are private hospitals as well, but they are a small, small minority. So, the municipalities, the hospital owners, became interested in ISO standards, not only in healthcare, but in many other aspects of their uh, activities. Then, um, some individual practitioners found something I think that Charles uh, over there may have been in, involved in, the King's Fund audit, medical audit, and that was introduced by individual medical practitioners, a new approach not heard of before. Then there was something called ITE. ITE in Finnish, um, if I translate it, would mean I, my, me and myself, i.e. 
that was a tool that was intended to be used by me to assess my own work. And that was developed again by the hospital owners, by the Finnish Hospital Association. But it was a very, very popular tool. People were interested. And in fact, if the Finnish Hospital Association looks at the uh, statistics of what they have published and sold, this particular piece, the questionnaire, it a questionnaire, I, m me and myself questionnaire, has been the most popular publication of the association in its history. It's quite remarkable that um, so many people wanted to use it. It basically consisted of uh, uh, 25 areas of care where the individuals were supposed to assess what they had done, what they had seen, what had happened. And then for the whole institution, the individual assessments were collected and uh, uh, a summary uh, result was given. Then there was a um, development of quality-related networks. The first one was sort of spontaneous, voluntary, completely voluntary network where some primary health care centers got interested um, in quality and decided, okay, let's um, start working in this field and let's start seeing what is going on and let's share the results. That was a very important thing, share the results. The, there was another network which was more sort of um, uh, top-down. That was the medical association uh, and a governmental research organization on health services <coughs> We established a network of experts who were looking at uh, what could be done uh, in the area of uh, quality improvement and uh, how to support those who were beginning activities in that area. Then there was a very important development which was called care programs or you perhaps know them better by the name treatment protocols. But the care program was a wider concept. It was an agreement at the regional level on, as to how to treat a disease. The <clears throat> diseases that were chosen were common, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, coronary disease, asthma, and so on. And for them, these programs were developed. <clears throat> then a little bit later, the, this development took a little bit different direction. Uh, it was called then current practice. And they, that was where the care programs were funded and um, uh, initiated by a foundation. The current practice recommendations were a professional activity, purely professional activity. The Finnish uh, specialist associations put together working groups and started looking at uh, important diseases. Then they tried to identify how those diseases or not only diseases, for instance, there were some things like uh, uh, alcohol abuse and uh, smoking, which are not necessarily diseases, but for which uh, current practice program uh, recommendations were being developed. So anyway, um, Fairly widespread um, expertise was collected and these groups started working on uh, how this particular problem should be diagnosed or first prevented if possible, then diagnosed if it had developed, then how it should be treated, should there be some kind of a rehabilitation and so on. So the whole chain from prevention to rehabilitation. And today, this is perhaps the most important quality-related activity in Finland. We have something like 100 of these programs now or recommendations available. They are available in two forms. One is for professionals and one is for public. A person having, let's say, psoriasis could opened his computer and found the current practice recommendation for psoriasis 
developed as part of this program and check am I being treated according to those guidelines. And then there is another version which is a much more detailed one and that is for the healthcare uh, professionals and to enter into that one you need a key, key so you, the patients can't see it. But the patient version is actually quite um, comprehensive as well. Fine. Then actually I have, uh, I should have had one very important slide in between because the authorities and the professional associations became interested. First, in 1992, the Ministry of Health and Social Welfare said in it is um, uh, annual program for the first time that good quality is an important objective of the work of the Ministry of Health. Then the Finnish Medical Association, three years later, 1995, published its own guidelines for good quality. The Finnish Nursing Association got its own guidelines in 1997. The uh, hospital association, the municipalities, the owners had their own version of quality uh, guidelines, uh, manual, handbook, and so on uh, at the same time. So, suddenly there were not only individuals and um, uh, some, uh, how would I say, transient interest, but there were very serious governmental backing for quality and professional backing. But then I make a little detour to uh, nursing, because nursing in Finland behaved very differently from the medical side. Nurses started much earlier. They were the real pioneers. And one of the reasons was that it was the 1970s, 1980s, there was a time when the Finnish nurses were sort of wake, waking up. They decided that we are as good as the doctors. And they wanted to strengthen their professional um, foundation, self-esteem, by taking a very active part role in WHO's program for nursing development. Uh, Agnes there knows very well this program, uh, having participated in its activities, but the Finnish nurses took it very seriously. There were 25, 21 uh, nursing schools, hospitals, health centers in Finland who were participating in this program. And also the nurses were influenced by WHO's um, general quality uh, assurance program. So their motivation was self-esteem and also to improve their competitive position vis-a-vis -vis the doctors. Also, the nurses at that time, partly for the same reasons, were encouraging very much uh, research by nurses. And finally, uh, there was university education of nurses started and the graduates, the masters of nursing, became the chief nurses of big hospitals, they became the deans of the nursing schools and so on, and they had all got this interest in quality because it was part of the curriculum in the universities. So, 1997, uh, actually this document, which is mentioned there in red, National Nursing Strategy for Quality and Results, was not produced by the Nursing Association, but by the Governmental Research uh, Agency for the Health Research, but with, of course, the support of the nurses. So, nurses were really a very important uh, pioneer. Now, when you look at these um, important policy documents I mentioned by the Ministry, by the Finnish Medical Association, by the Nursing Association, all say that quality should be incorporated in training of health professionals. It is one of the key recommendations of each one of these uh, policy documents. However, when I asked the uh, practitioners, the experts in the field, do you think that 
medical education, nursing education really prepares for practical work in quality. They said, yes, maybe in nursing, but not in med medicine. The medical schools don't prepare doctors for quality-related activities. And when I asked the universities, do you teach uh, quality assurance? The University of Helsinki, the leading one in Finland, at least they themselves believe it's the leading one, um, said that we have nothing. Another one, the university where I worked before uh, joining the WHO, said you stumble over quality all over the place. So that was a um, uh, continuum. <laughs> but when you look at um, what there really was, it was relatively little. There was something in uh, uh, the clinical teaching, particularly if you had a good clinical teacher who would teach in his, with his own personal behavior example, uh, that would help, but um, otherwise rather little. There was an interesting uh, course, though, called um, uh, Medical Failures but in one of the universities, and that definitely um, was focused very much on quality because the failures were very often the results of poor quality. Well, now then I tried to analyze what exactly happened in the beginning of 1990s to see all this activity going on. Was there some kind of a big bang? And one of my experts, actually a former president of Finnish Medical Association, said, no, I don't believe in a big bang. It just was a, the right time, and there were individuals here and there in the right places. The president of Finnish Medical Association, the president of the Finnish Nursing Association, the uh, director of this uh, research institution I have mentioned, uh, the <coughs> some imp uh, influential people in the Ministry of Health, and somehow they felt that this might be something useful. Now, the second possibility is that some laws might have been passed. Yes, there was a law called uh, Law on Patient Accidents. And there was another one which sounds very promising in this respect, the Law on Patients' Rights. And the latter one, passed in 1992, very clearly says that one of the basic rights is the right to good care. But they came a little bit late. The activity had started already before that. So the laws were perhaps rather a consequence of what was happening than the triggering factor. Then, of course, there was the professional pride. The Finnish Medical Association in its constitution says, we are here to promote good quality. The nursing, uh, Finnish Nursing Association says more or less the same in their own constitution. So, of course, if you put that in your constitution and if you take it seriously, you have to do something. And that definitely was one factor. Then there's something called the Finnish Association of Consumers. And they also got interested in health. But again, it seems, when looking at their documents, the way they wrote, that they were actually responding to what already had happened. They were not initiating something. They, were, uh, they had sort of suddenly realized, oh gosh, there's something called quality assurance going on. It, it must be good for the consumers. Let's jump on the bandwagon, rather than saying, we want to start this. Okay. Then a very important factor, which I think you will find in many, many countries, was that uh, there was some very worrying observations on variation. Um, there were lots of studies uh, carried out at that time showing that there was four, five, six, seven, ten times difference in certain activities like uh, cesarean section between hospitals. There, was one study where the use of X-rays in three common disorders were being analyzed, and there was a 12-fold difference in the number of X-rays taken by, per patient between the extreme hospitals. And of course, the hospital with the biggest number said, oh, you didn't realize that our patients are so old and so uh, uh, sick and so on, so therefore we have to. Well, the researcher had actually taken that into account and had standardized his data for patient mix and published in the next issue the standardized data, and there was still a five-fold difference. So, and 
people started asking, how come a five-fold difference in taking x-rays for the same kind of patient for the same, with the same disease? There must be something wrong somewhere. So those were uh, quite an important uh, trigger. Then there were good examples. Finland has the oldest system in the world on uh, uh, universal, uh, I mean, uh, laboratory quality control using universal uh, common uh, test samples. The um, United States has started earlier the control of laboratories, but Finland was the first country to, to introduce this element of common uh, test samples. Uh, international influence. Um, I was working already at that time in WHO and I was in charge, as uh, Andrea was telling, of the quality assurance program. And I would have been very happy to see that our program had a major influence in Finland. No, very little actually. ISQA is another one uh, who could have had an influence. Not really. There have been something like 10 members, individual members, of, from Finland who have been members of ISQA. Finally, I stumbled on something very important. Um, Bill Clinton, when he was running his second presidential election campaign, uh, concentrated on economy. He was saying, it's the economy stupid. And in Finland, it was the economy stupid. In 1990s, early 1990s, there was a very serious depression in Finland. And the politicians, the hospital owners, the, even the health professionals got worried. If we have such a scarcity of resources, we have to use them well. We have to use them for good quality. And when you look at the, particularly the opinion the kind of articles, the editorials in the journals and so on, they repeatedly say, Scarcity of resources. Resources have to be used for the best possible care. Uh, the second one was our competitive edge increases when we uh, improve the uh, uh, quality of care. Um, I already mentioned the World Health Organization had rather little impact. ISCO had rather little impact. Bonka the general practitioners worldwide association had quite a bit of impact, but later, the process had already started. And I mentioned already the economic depression in the beginning of the 1990s, scarcity of resources, competitive advantage on them a year. Um, there are local initiatives that look at concrete problems. There are still these uh, basic documents by Ministry of Health, by the Research Institute, by the Medical Association, by the Finnish Nursing Association, but they have not been updated. They have been, they are from 1990s, still today. But then what is <coughs> flourishing are the comprehensive quality systems, i.e. ISO kind of ideas, uh, quality manuals, and so on. Now, Maybe I move to the last one, the lessons learned. I, my views may differ from those of uh, some of my colleagues here, but that would be fine because then we can have some discussion. So I would say start slowly. Don't be too ambitious. Don't try to introduce a hospital-wide uh, comprehensive quality management system in one day. Rather, start with parts of it. Then, start with something that everybody cons considers a problem. If you don't have a problem, if, don't be, if people don't realize that they have a problem, then they have no motivation whatsoever to get involved. Then, there's a saying, and nothing succeeds like success. What I mean with this is that if you start then choose something where, in a little bit Machiavellian way, you know in advance that you can solve the problem, that your chances to do something are good. When you then can show, okay, we had this problem, 
Now we did this and we solved it. Then you can uh, sell the next problem much more effectively. Then involve everybody, work as a team. Um, <coughs> what I said about the Finnish nurses is a good example of that. Because the nurses started earlier and went their own way, the Finnish medical uh, doctors actually were saying when quality assurance reached their field later that, fine, that's nurses' business. We don't need to worry about it. If there had been from the beginning cooperation, teamwork, it would have been a very different thing. Keep it professional and avoid commercialization. Now, that is perhaps a point where some of my colleagues will disagree. Uh, but in Finland, one of the reasons why <coughs> lots of medical professionals have become a little bit uh, hesitant is that there are too many consultants around who are selling their services and they have all very specialized jargon, ter language terms, uh, uh, charts, uh, models, and so on. And ooh, which, which one of these is good? I, I, I don't know. So beware big systems, particularly if your inter information system is not up to it. Uh, you need a very good information system if you try to introduce something uh, institution-wide. And then <coughs> I would say legislate late, if at all. I would much rather see a professionally oriented, professionally run voluntary system than a compulsory system. Thank you. Thank you to you, Hannah.